Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, today we will be presenting a case of a 60 year old female who presented to our ER with loose tools since the past 5 days and altered sensorium with uh, coarse tremors since the past 3 days. Okay. Shall I proceed sir? Yeah. Uh, uh, we have a 60 year old female who has presented with uh, uh, loose stool since the past 5 days along with vomiting and she had uh, altered sensorium since the past 3 days okay. along with 3 episodes of vomiting. Okay. On our initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious mm -hmm. but she was confused. In our primary survey, her airway was patent with no pulling of secretions and she was speaking in full sentences. Breathing part on auscultation, chest was clear with bilateral, air entry equal and symmetrical and adequate chest excursions. She had a respiratory rate of 28 cycles per minute, okay. maintaining saturation of 97% on room air. Okay. Uh, coming to circulation, she had good peripheral pulses with pulse rate of 78 and maintaining yeah. a BP of 160-80. Okay. Coming to disability, her GCS was E4, V4, M6, uh, totaling of 14 mm. on 15. Uh, with pupils 2.5 mm bilaterally reacting to light. Okay. Exposure, she had a normal temperature with GRBS of 134. Okay. Uh, coming to the adjuncts to primary okay. survey. Okay, let's stop yes. here. So, sir, any questions to be added, sir? So, what is the age of the patient? 60, sir. 60, okay, okay. 60. Yeah, vital stable. Vital stable, sir. Well, hemodynamically stable patient, a 60 year old lady has come to you with multiple episodes of loose tools and vomiting mm. and she also has got some altered sensory. Yes. So, this is the background history. So, uh, what are things that you will keep in your mind at this point of time? What are your probable differential? Why she is having vomiting loose tools? Maybe a part of gastroenteritis. Okay. Um. Then, why she? Which one? Dehydration. Dehydration, gastroenteritis, dehydration, then. Mm. So, as I always say, go for the risk factors, what all she has, age 60 years, mm. so that is a risk factor. Then what else she is having, diabetes, hypertension? Uh, her comorbidities are diabetes, she is a hypothyroid. Hypothyroid, Hypothyroidism. okay. Hypothyroidism and she is a, a case of bipolar affective disorder. Bipolar affective disorder, okay. On, uh, lithium and quetiapin. Lithium and quetiapin. Since okay. the past five years. Since last five years. So. We have a lady, now we have a little bit more clarity. We have an elderly lady coming with, with acute episode of uh, five episodes of five days history of loose tools and vomiting. So, with this background, always we put acute gastroenteritis. Any history of fever? No history of fever. No history of fever. So, uh, history of fever is not the, so that rules out an infection or can we just say that uh, probably due to some reason she is not having fever? So, she is an elderly female. Okay. So Fever might not be present because one, she can be immunocompromised and fever can also be a late finding in elderly patients and they might not present. Okay. Tremors, what tremors would be the reason for the tremors? One, old age itself can cause tremors. Mm -hmm. Then um, if she's panicked or she has got some stress issues, anxiety can cause tremors. Okay. And plus she's on lithium, lithium toxicity can cause tremors. Then UTI or uh, any infections, so okay. she has fever because of pyrexia, again she can have tremors. Okay, so let's uh, take the other one, thyroid disease you thyroid, said. Uh, Why she developed thyroid disease? Since how long she is taking thyroid tablets? Since the past 5 years. Past 5 years exactly or after lithium she started developing uh, uh, hypothyroidism. So lithium is one drug that can cause hypothyroidism. So, that history we should know whether secondary to lithium she has developed a hypothyroidism or previously itself she was hypothyroid. After taking lithium. After starting lithium, lithium. she has become hypothyroid. Okay. So, it can be a side effect of your lithium. Mm. So that is the hypothyroidism attributable to that. Okay. Now, uh, what are the other reasons? With this background history, can you just elaborate your differentials? Uh, so, uh, one more history which I got was the patient had uh, this loose stool since the past three days. Okay. She uh, went to a local hospital there. She okay. was admitted there and okay. her urine routine had showed uh, 25 to 30 pustules. Okay. And she was she underwent an antibiotic treatment for the same. Okay. There, the creatinine was one uh, two when it was there. and She was referred from there. She was referred okay. from there. So, basically now we have a little bit more clarity. She had been undergone treatment in some other center mm -hmm. and been referred here. So, mm -hmm. probably in the initial presentation, she had probably a possibility of a sepsis, mm. underlying vomiting or a gastroenteritis or a UTI. Mm. 
uh, that can be the reason and she was treated there and she has been referred here mm. and she is on lithium and she is on thyroid supplements yes. she is diabetes yes she is a diabetic so lithium can cause what type of diabetes insipidus diabetes, diabetes insipidus. insipidus so what is the type of diabetes it's not an insipidus diabetes mellitus like only for her so it was there before itself when she started before itself it before is. itself she had this diabetes so uh, now tell me what are the possibilities what are all the differential that you keep in mind in this patient Uh, sir, it could be a pre-renal due to urosepsis, infection, infection infections. Then no, no, I am, I am giving you a differential. What are the possibility for her fever, uh, not for her vomiting and her loose stools? One, because of thyroid dysfunction can mm. cause loose stools and uh, vomiting, sir. Or okay. Or all the anti-psychotic me- medication that she is on as a side effect so, of that. So, so usually hyperthyroidism, she is taking a uh, increased dose of thyroid that can can have these symptoms mm. it can be if she requires only maybe 50 microgram she is already taking 100 microgram that might precipitate mm. that might be one of the rarest thing but uh, iatrogenic hypothyroidism we will see but commonly patient coming with thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism like graves or hashimotos thyroiditis the initial phase we will have that uh, phase of they have diarrhea they have uh, loose stools palpitation and all those things but that is one possibility with this background then next thing is gastroenteritis or an uti infection related then what will be the other possibility that you need to consider what could be the reason for her altered sensorium we need to fix in all these puzzles one dehydration itself can cause altered sensorium or okay. infections like urinary tract infection itself can cause altered sensorium okay or uh, active uh, the active episode of bipolar affective disorder in that maybe she can be confused see what exactly mean by a bipolar affective disorder basically it's switching between depression, depression and, mania. and mania and mania so what is her face right now uh, depressive they should be altered since they will not be reacting to you she said a gcs of 14 she is not in a maniac face also so uh, something else is contributing to her cns effects maybe an electrolyte imbalance electrolyte imbalance that is the one most common one maybe hyponatremia simple hyponatremia due to depletional per can be the reason mm-hmm. or uh, it can be any other problem but the most common will be an hyponatremia that we need to consider here sugar level so 154 was a gabs 154 hypoglycemia ruled out so this are the possibility that we need to consider so always when a patient comes to you we have to see in whether what are the possibilities that we need to consider differential changes according to the risk factor of the patient and what all medication he is taking suppose a young lady is coming she has gone outside and taken some food and coming with an acute gastroenteritis that is a straight forward thing mm-hmm. but is an again an elderly lady she has come with uh, multiple episode of loose stools and vomiting then we have to consider the differential diagnosis okay can it be an uh, anything else for that uh, diabetic gastropathy that is the other most common thing diabetic gastropathy they can have this uh, they can have constipation as well as they can have increased frequency mm. so that is one thing that you have to keep in your mind but it will not be an acute presentation it will be a uh, everyday issue for them so something has acutely happened to this patient and she has come to you mm. and she is on lithium and on thyroid supplements mm. so with this background what are the risk factors for her what are the things that you should uh, evaluate in her hyperactive electrolytes hyponatremia basically lithium patient because since she's very stable patient we have uh, nothing to do in the abcd mm. we are just uh, need to send some investigation and you need to start her on treatment so okay, you can continue with your adjuncts uh, uh, coming to adjuncts to primary survey mm. we did a vbg mm. which shows a ph of 7.35 mm. pco of 33.6 and bicarb of 18.2 Our VBG shows creatinine of 1.6 with lactate of 1. Mm. Sodium is 143 with potassium of 5. So, what is your impression about this blood gas? Yes. Uh, no acid base. No acid base balance. Uh, 7.35. Bicarbonate of 18. Bicarbonate of 18 is it normal? Pending. It is not normal. She has compensated. She has got compensated. Metabolic metabolism disease is there. Mm. It is but compensated. Mm. See what is the PCO two? Thirty three. So what is the expected PCO two here? Thirty five. Eighteen into one point five. That is eighteen plus nine. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty seven plus eight. So how much it should be? Somewhere around thirty five. Thirty five plus or minus two. Thirty three. So it is actually adequately compensated metabolic acidosis. Reason for metabolic acidosis? Diarrhea. can be the reason for it then she has got mild renal dysfunction mm. 
So that can be the reason. Lactate mm. looks okay. Lactate okay. Now what you have to do when you see in metabolic acidosis, what is the next thing? You have to see, you have to calculate the anion gap. Mm. What is the anion gap here? So, 143 sodium. 143 sodium. Uh, what Ash. is the chloride? Chloride is 115. 115 plus 18 of bicarbonate. Mm. So 133. 133 143 minus it's yeah. a it's a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis where you will get normal anion yeah. gap in diarrhea. in diarrhea so that is the reason so you got the answer here mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. a compensated metabolic acidosis primarily it is due to can be due mm-hmm. to diarrhea yeah. sir anything sir okay sir oh. uh, next we did an ecg which shows mm-hmm. uh, a heart rate of 78 with no uh, no with normal sinus rhythm okay and qtc was 473 473 so Why you wanted an ECG? What is the reason you asked for an ECG as an adjunct to your primary survey? Uh, in this case, uh, since we are suspecting a lithium toxicity, uh, we want to rule out if there is any bradycardia or any arrhythmias. Okay, uh, bradycardia. The patient is on lithium, chronic lithium, and that is the one reason you have asked for. Okay, fine. Then. And an inferior wall MRI. Inferior wall MRI rarely, but five days history is very unlikely to to come with an uh, with an acute onset of vomiting gastritis. We can think of uh, five days very unlikely. She has got admitted in another hospital. They would have evaluated her. So unlikely to be an myocardial infarction. For the reason she is on lithium, you asked for to see the look for the QTC and look for any evidence of radicardia or anything. We didn't see, but four seventy looks okay, higher than normal range. Within the normal range only, but it's higher than normal range. Okay, fine. Then what are the other investigations that you have asked for? Secondary. What are the other secondary survey? Um, patient uh, is a non-case of bipolar affective disorder. Okay. She is on uh, lithium four hundred uh, BD mm-hmm. along with quetiapine twenty five mg. I I just wanted to know one more information whether lithium is a sustained release tablet or whether she was taking a normal. Sustained release. She was taking a sustained release tablet. Okay. So why this information is very important? to know the absorption how especially when the patient is coming with an acute ingestion acute overdose that information is very important mm-hmm. so what is the uh, probable uh, there is no toxic overdose as such for lithium to be very clearly to state maybe a couple of doses can be toxic for one patient there are patient who have taken many number of tablet and significantly they didn't have any problems also it all depends upon the clearance and uh, how the kidneys are functioning majority of the time so uh, a patient who has consumed acute toxicity of lithium when they have taken sustained release tablet the problem is going to be we are anticipating a bigger problem mm-hmm. that's the only thing that we can understand from this what is the uh, what is the uh, what is the literature any idea about the toxic dose anything uh, the therapeutic index is 0.8 to 1.2 toxic level is more than 1.5 that is with the level i am telling you the number of tablets by the tablets around 2400 mg they supposed to say that it is a toxic level more than to 10 to 15 tablets more than 10 to handful of tablets more than handful of more than 10 to 15 tablets mm-hmm. it is found to be mm-hmm. toxic but there has been case reports where they have consumed like uh, 70 80 mg and also uh, 80 mg per kg also they have not happened anything so we cannot say this is toxic this is not toxic like when we say in paracetamol 200 mg per kg in a single ingestion is a toxic dose mm-hmm. like that we cannot say in lithium so that is one problem with lithium so lithium toxicity you have considered as one of the differential diagnosis mm-hmm. reason being why you have consider uh, what are the things that is fitting towards lithium toxicity uh, the patient was cro- uh, one thing chronic lithium chronic level. lithium ingestion second one ിലി and they have got some acute worsening mm. like this happened to this patient or else it can be due to certain drugs mm. which has been added recently mm. any history like that no. any ac inhibitors arbs mm. any diuretics added to her mm. no so that is the other thing that you have to look mm. in for so the patient is taking lithium for a long time chronic to- chronically she is taking on lithium now suddenly due to some worsening like the uh, most common is dehydration sepsis and second will be any drugs yes. 
third thing second one will be acute oxidity they have taken a few like to the like 10 to 15 tablets of lithium and they's come to you mm. and third group will be they are on lithium for a long time and they have come with an uh, uh, increased therapeutic level mm. so that will be a chronic toxicity mm. so you can have something like an acute on chronic mm. and you can have acute and you have a chronic mm. so these are the three phases that you can have in lithium toxicity so uh, now uh, why you said one this patient is on a chronic lithium and she had got an acute worsening of her uh, renal function due to a gastroenteritis third reason she has tremors she has tremors tremors okay will be classically an irregular course tremors will be there so for lithium and uh, basically if a patient has acute toxicity the neurological symptoms will be a late finding yes. but if the patient is on chronic usage then neurological finding becomes an very early s- sign okay. also so what are the so three things are fitting for this patient one is this patient is on lithium mm. she has got an acute worsening mm. of her creatine mm. and third thing she has got some trauma so these three things within that this patient probably might have an underlying some other problem and also she has got a lithium toxicity because of it low therapeutic index next what are the other clinical features that you need to look in for altered sensorium was there altered sensorium of gcs of 14 by 15 okay then then other symptoms will be like ataxia hmm. uh, sluggishness you can any one of you ataxia confusion okay there was sluggishness okay and in the examination rigidity and spasticity hypotonia everything was fitting, fitting. so uh, these all things can be attributable to a probable add on lithium toxicity i will not say lithium toxicity as the first problem for her she has got some other issue on top of this she has developed since she is on a chronic lithium toxicity she has developed that also so any add on questions sir pardon sir anything sir illa illa okay okay sir okay so uh, now uh, this patient is in front of you so how will you treat about uh, go about this patient uh, so first we did was to withhold the lithium tablet okay. that she was taking okay and uh, since she was dehydrated we started to uh, rehydrate her okay and the serum lithium levels were sent we are okay. awaiting the reports right okay now. we are awaiting the reports right now so we have a patient here old 60 year old lady who has come with episode of multiple episode of uh, vomiting and loose stools and when we examined her uh, she had airway breathing circulation everything was fine and she has got mild auto sensory of 14 by 15 gcs mm. and her other uh, initial parameters looks okay and we went to the history then we got the history of this hypothyroidism then we got the history of lithium she is taking for by polar affective disorder and when then we came back and we have got this other differential yeah. diagnosis so we are suspecting a possibility of a sepsis what is the crp here crp is 3 3 so crp again 3 due to two reasons she has already received antibiotic from outside okay. hospital or else it could have been an resolving infection mm-hmm. but uh, due to some other reason maybe due to the lithium toxicity she has come to our hospital for further management so uh, what are the uh, next uh, line of management you said you have sent for lithium level mm. suppose you are not having a center where you don't have a facility to send lithium level we have a facility to send li- lithium level so we can uh, get it within another 24 hours and uh, you can do the further management suppose you are not able to do a lithium level what will you do see the history is very strongly suggestive of mm. acute either an overdose or toxicity of mm. lithium tablets then there is no role of gastric decontamination so because it's a heavy metal so activated charge also it's a chronic ingestion chronic ingestion doesn't happen but if at all the they have a strong evidence of renal failure and is strongly suspecting lithium is a very easily di- uh, dialysable toxin so depending upon the patient's uh, clinical symptoms this with the benefit of doubt we can dialyze the patient okay so the scenario i am giving you is a very easy scenario you don't have a serum lithium level availability with you so when will you decide okay this is due to lithium you rule out other causes mm. simple thing you rule out other causes why she should have developed this alter sensorium mm. there is no dyselectrolemia there is no evidence of sepsis there is nothing else you are not attributing to her alter sensorium then you have to think that it is due to lithium then we have to dialyze her mm. if you have facility for lithium we can wait mm. because unless and until she is like having a cardiac arrhythmia or there is any other indication for dialysis like metabolic acidosis or renal failure we can dialyze mm-hmm. but otherwise we can wait and watch here like what we are doing right now we are just awaiting to see her uh, therapeutic level if it is within the therapeutic level everything is out mm-hmm. if it is above the therapeutic level definitely she need to be are taken up for the treatment so can you just elaborate how will you uh, manage lithium toxicity depending upon the level 
Uh, sir, if the values are more than five, straight away we can go for a dialysis. Okay. But if it is <clears throat> more than four, but less than five, with patient is having a renal impairment, we can consider dialysis. If uh, without considering the values, if the patient is having an altered sensorium, a low mental status, status epilepticus, then we can directly go for a hemodialysis. Hemodialysis. So that's pretty clear. If you have a level, what to be done? If you don't have a level, what to be done? See, everything it is your clinical impression. If you feel that this patient's symptom is due to lithium toxicity without any other evidences you can just go ahead and dialysis patient so that is pretty easy it's a dialysable toxic anyway she is having a chronic ingestion of the lithium is there and she is taking extended release tablets and another thing is that she has got some recent worsening of renal failure so uh, there is no point in delaying the dialysis unless and until we are awaiting for a result something like what we are doing now we don't have any other indication for dialysis that's the reason why we have waited there is no seizure there is no arrhythmia there is no other neurological further manifestation or deterioration so that is the whole reason we waited sir any other add on add on see any diuretics will be of any help or say diuresis or diuretics diuresis will further worsen the dehydration so we don't prefer diuretics what is dehydration and the renal insult is already there already yeah. there okay. So, uh, the most important thing like forced alkaline diuresis. Yeah. Again, it is not needed here. It should not be done. Rather not needed, it should not be done. So, uh, see, when you have a patient with acute gastroenteritis, the management is different. Yeah. But here, it can be an acute gastroenteritis on top of with an add-on lithium toxicity. Yeah. So, the lithium toxicity got worsened because of her gastroenteritis. Yeah. Yeah, that can be the reason. And uh, diarrhea usually won't be seen in lithium toxic. They will have more of upper GA symptoms. Mm -hmm. Nausea, vomiting, then neurological manifestation, cardiotoxicity, and renal dysfunction. This will be the presentation. So, nephrogenic, diabetic nephrogenic diabetic insipidus. 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 Nephrogenic diabetic even though it's not indicated for gastric decontamination, mm. so patient coming in within four hours with like more than ten percent average, so extend the release tablet. Yes. Like is uh, like indicated. Yeah. Whole bowel irrigation. Whole bowel irrigation. Uh, some multiple case so, studies have shown that actually it is actually very helpful in like. Okay, so you are uh, telling that if the patient is having an acute ingestion, mm. not a chronic ingestion, yeah. like in this case, it is of it's no use. If the patient has taken some 10 to 15 tablets of extended release tablets. That is again sound sense. Mm. Why? Because the uh, normally the gastric emptying time is two to three hours. Mm. So initially, within two hours, if they come, we do a lavage. Mm. But if it's an extended release tablet, it's going to be absorbing for a longer time. So it will can be still there in the GA system. So we can go for a whole bowel irrigation mm. with PEC. So that. Uh, that for any, any other for that, that holds good for all extended release tablets mm -hmm. which can be removed by GAD contamination when we know about whichever drugs which has got an extended release preparation mm -hmm. you can think of an whole bowel irrigation okay here we have to keep in mind about the diarrhea part mm -hmm. already patient is having uh, yes. more frequency so whenever you are want to decontaminate <laughs> it also we, we can get. she has come for a diarrhea <laughs> and you are giving whole bowel irrigation it's okay. an uh, you are telling regarding acute toxicity. Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, we have. Currently, patient is having a good urine output and okay. creatinine is improving. Creatinine is improving. We have corrected the dehydration. We have corrected, dehydration. We have corrected all other parameters and she is holding good. We are awaiting for the uh, lithium, level. lithium level. Suppose the lithium level comes to be 2. And this is the condition of the patient. You want to dialyze her? Uh -huh. No. You just wait and watch. Suppose it's above 5, definitely yes. Mm -hmm. Suppose 4 and she is deteriorating, yes. Mm -hmm. But right now, clinically also she is improving. Maybe we can just wait and watch. Mm -hmm. She improved, no need of a dialysis. Mm -hmm. In so if we are starting dialysis, there are just two schools of thought. One is actually one single dialysis enough just to bring down the level. Second will be we repeat dialysis by repeating the lithium level and seeing like how much it is decreasing. And we uh, reach it up to 1 millimole per liter. So 1 millimoles. So one millimole. Millimole. So you can, depending upon the level of lithium, you can decide you need further uh, dialysis or not. So after every dialysis, we repeat after about 6 to 8 hours, we do a repeat lithium level. So we have a facility to come round the clock lithium level, we can do all those things. But if you don't have a facility, clinical deterioration, go ahead and dialysis. That's it. Until the patient is improving, you repeat the dialysis. So that's a simple uh, thing that you can practice. Okay. Regarding the anesthetic agent, sir. Suppose this patient is warranted to go for an endotracheal intubation, drug selection and other aspects. What will you keep in mind? What are all things you have to take care of? 
See, one is age, 60 years. Whatever the uh, patients of aged people, they will have from the airway down, everything we have to keep up. Uh, in this patient, there is hypovolemia at any time. Any of the drugs, especially sedative drugs, so they may precipitate a severe hypotension and shock. The beyond treatable also. This one you have to keep up. And all the sedative drugs, most of the things, they will be usually producing hypotension. Mm. And also the lithium itself, and along with this altered mental status, the dosage of drugs should be much reduced. So, unless there is other, they will be having prolonged or deeper sedation, these patients will be going for. And then regarding the induction agent, what could be the choice? More like a cardiac stream, like a tromodic. Pardon? A tromodic can be preferred more like yeah. cardiac stream. Okay. Any analgesic? Analgesia, uh, okay. fentanyl. 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 Short acting, immediate recovery. Mm-hmm. That type of drugs we can be selected and then it can be used in mm-hmm. lower dosages. Mm-hmm. Regarding muscle relaxants? Uh, preferably non depolarizing. Like See, both non depolarizing and depolarizing agents are potentiated by lithium drugs. So here again we have to Reduce consider dose. about the uh, dosage. Hyperkalemia saxamatonium causes hyperkalemia. Yeah, very good. Okay. The, that is another reason mm-hmm. succinyl choline mm-hmm. should be avoided. So depolarizing agents cause more pronounced potentiation. non depolaris also to certain extent they also have a potentiation reaction. Okay. Okay. What is the TSH? 15. 1-5. Thyroid is out. Hypothyroid is. She's still in hypothyroid. So she need to. What is the dose of uh, this thing? She's seventy five. So we need to target at least fifty percent reduction from the normal. So if it is four cut off, you have to maintain around two. Mm-hmm. So again, we need to increase the dose, but not now. Mm-hmm. But once her diary everything settles, we can just add on. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, well done.